Hello, welcome again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax guys. guys. And as you can see, we have a guest with us in the studio. Ron, I assume you know this guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I've heard of him once or twice, yeah. <laughs> I, I met him outside the door. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That works. Well, <laughs> go ahead and tell everybody who we got here. Well, we've got Steve Hayes, president of Americans for Fair Taxation, which uh, here in Florida we call that our, our mothership. Okay, um, Steve has been involved in the idea of replacing the income tax with a consumption tax since before the fair tax was born. He's been working on this a long time. So, uh, Steve, go ahead and introduce. Oops. Welcome to the See, program, just, sir. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> it's, I, it's an honor. I've done a lot of radio, but this is one where I'm dealing with people who are as active as I have been in supporting getting rid of the income tax, payroll tax system, and going to the fair tax, which is, I think, becoming more and more obvious that needs to happen. Mm. So right. I'm delighted to be with you. Okay, we are on live. It is just after 11 a.m. on, uh, that's Eastern Time, on Wednesday, August 29th. And if your clock and calendar are in, in uh, sync with that, you can call us. Our number is 888-787-8023. We will be taking some phone calls. If you want to talk to the guy who knows more about the fair tax than anybody else on the planet, you can do that. But you're going to have to hold for a second, too, because I want to get into something that we've been uh, hitting on pretty hard here in Fairtax Power Radio over the past couple of weeks, and that was that flagrantly dishonest ad that the Adam Putnam campaign, Adam Putnam, a, cam a, g a candidate for governor here in right. Florida, was just demagoguing the heck out of the fair tax, and I'm not going to rehash all that. But as a private citizen and not speaking for any organization that mm -hmm. I might happen to belong to, I am pleased to report Adam Putnam not only lost, he got clobbered. I mean, 20 points. Right. And, uh, of course, a lot of different factors go into the outcome of an election like that. But the Florida Fair Tax Group was pushing back really hard yes. against that dishonest ad. You were front and center in that mm -hmm. fight. And I'd like you to kind of detail what went on there and, and get your opinion on how much that effort had uh, the result, uh, in, impacted this result. I'd be very happy to, yes. What? Well, first of all, let me just say that <clears throat> The first time this really came out was when Jim DeMint, who had been a supporter of the replacement of the income tax that happened back in the early 1990s, it was the uh, Billy Tozan bill. And Jim had been a member of Congress who was <clears throat> an avid supporter. He's a good guy. As you know, he went on to head the Heritage Organization. And Jim was running for Senate. And I remember this, I won't say panic, but concern call that we received that Jim was being attacked for his support of the proposal, the Tozan proposal, which would get rid of the income tax and go to a retail sales tax. Mm -hmm. And so we sent some people down, we went in, did some rallies, and it turned out to be something that was handled, but it was really of concern to Jim and his campaign people because at that time, you know, going to a retail sales tax was very, very different. Today, the things have really changed. And when Cong our Congressman DeSantis, who has been a co-sponsor throughout his term yep. in Congress, mm -hmm. he is a co-sponsor this term. And when Putnam suddenly saw this as an opportunity to say in a very dishonest way that everything is going to go up 23%, it's going to ruin tourism, it's going to ruin Florida, uh, you're not going to be able to buy milk, you're, you know, if you're a senior you're going to go broke, you're going to be on the street. I mean, all of these implications that came, it looked like, you know, some of his visuals, like we just <laughs> been through the worst of all hurricanes. <laughs> and and the fact is that it was blatantly dishonest when I was contacted by PolitiFact, which is not known for being very uh, conservative oriented, may I say. They're, they're much less interested, I think, in defending some conservative ideas, but they contacted me and, and they came up and they said it was a very misleading ad. But the great thing was that the fair tax group in Florida, and also, I may add, a number of fair taxers around the country began to contact Putnam's campaign. Mm -hmm. 
and began to say, wait a minute, what is this? This is blatantly wrong. How can you be doing this? And there were several people that called me and said, look, I donated to this guy. I mean, Adam Putnam was going to be sort of like Hillary was going to be coronated as the next president. Well, yeah. Adam has been building on this literally since he was in high school. He was mm -hmm. the president of the 4-H, and then he became at 22 a state senator or a state representative. He went on to Congress, and he's had, he's been on a nice traditional trajectory to become governor and who knows what else. Right. And here he came into, and he got hit and I think you cannot take away the immense impact of President Trump saying we don't need any more career politicians. We don't need any more people who are of the Jeb Bush group that believe that we all get along together and we take care of each other. We need someone like Ron DeSantis who's willing to stand up and say what he thinks. And enormous amount of help. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of the big donors mm -hmm. to Mr. Putnam, like he had like a $38 million to $17 million uh, campaign fund lead. Yeah. But a lot of the big donors who had been donating to Putnam began donating to DeSantis after Trump's endorsement. Wow. And what I think the fair tax ad was a direct response, I've got to nail this guy DeSantis mm -hmm. and he came out and it totally backfired and as far as how much the 20 point loss can be attributed to the fair tax hard to say I've actually read some things where people were saying maybe as much as 10 percent who knows it might have been five percent but well, it was definitely to our, our vice president in email this morning yep. he, he, he wants thought to take it was credit 10%. for half of it yeah and he may very well be correct because it did two things. One is it exposed Mr. Putnam as someone who was willing <clears throat> to really be a traditional politician yeah. and obscure the facts, in fact, blatantly distort the facts. Mm -hmm. And if you have somebody who does that in one area, you have to kind of assume that they're not going to have a lot of reticence in doing it in another area. Mm -hmm. So. I think that it was a big mistake. I think uh, Ed Connor, who Ron was speaking about, said that he really stepped on a rattlesnake. I because, love that analogy. <laughs> yeah, because that's really what happened, and it came back to bite him. And then Ed was at a, a meeting with Putnam, a campaign meeting, uh, where he was doing trying to do some fundraising, and Putnam said he was going to pull the ad. I went to a meet and greet with the candidate in Largo mm -hmm. and it was at a barbecue place and I knew immediately that he had some real problems because there were probably 30 people there and this was from 8 to 10 now this was like a thing where they were expecting a couple of hundred mm -hmm. 30 mm -hmm. people of which probably half were part of the campaign <laughs> so you know, you looked at that, and so when I got a chance to speak to him, he was, you know, he's, he's actually a very personal man. He's uh, obviously, to have been as successful as he's been in politics, you've got to be personal. He gave a really positive talk, and when I introduced myself and talked to him, I told him who I was with the fair tax, and it, before I could even finish tax, he says, that's been pulled. <laughs> that's all gone. And I said, well, that's fine, but if you'd like to really understand it, and I put a pocket card in his shirt and said, you know, here's my business card, you know, contact me and I'll be happy to take you through it and show you why I think you'll, you'll see that not only is it good for Florida, mm -hmm. but it's good for the country. And he was pleasant enough, and then one of his staffers who apparently... <laughs> picked up he the, was he was sent over to rescue yeah <laughs> said uh, you know Adam can you come over here we've got to talk you need to talk to blah 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 <laughs> and at that point I I said well thanks for your time and left and he was very again he was very charming but you could tell that he was 
obviously desperate because even though he was trying to say the polls were neck and neck, mm -hmm. it was pretty obvious by the polls that I had seen that DeSantis was starting to pull away. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Fairtax had an impact. How much of an impact, hard yeah, to measure. You can't really measure that. But. but it was definitely an impact. And it, but it was more for me a signal that the perceived uh, problem with being a fair tax co-sponsor of being attacked and demagogued and defeated mm -hmm. because of that is no longer automatic. Yeah. Well, I, I want I, tell you, I want to expand this beyond a single race in Florida. Yep. We, we have been saying for a long time, nobody's going to get the fair tax until it becomes a winning issue at the ballot box. Right. And uh, it was a winning issue at the ballot box for Ron DeSantis in yes. this race. It was a losing issue, losing big for the guy who was doing the demagoguing. Can we begin to expand that ahead and, and get the other candidates in other places' attention and uh, tell them that supporting the fair tax is a winner? Are we getting there? I think we're getting closer to that. I think this this particular issue was watched very closely. I've talked to Congressman Woodall's staff, and they're the, mm -hmm. they're the, they're the sponsors in Congress. Sponsor in the House. And they have been talking to a lot of members, and a lo most of them were very much aware that he was being attacked, and there was some nervousness among some of the co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. But the fact that this has actually turned around and yeah. become more of a positive, I think uh, this sent a strong message. And there are some people who were sort of on the fence. One of them came over mm -hmm. and became a co-sponsor. So, and I think you're going to see more of that happening as people become less concerned that the fair tax is a negative and start to see it as more of a positive, which can, was to what your point. Can I assume that DeSantis was quite, uh, you know, help, glad to have the help? I think. D did you talk to him? I, I, Ed did. Ed did, okay. <laughs> yes. And I know he was very, very pleased. I, I've been talking to members of his campaign staff, the senior mm -hmm. members, who re immediately reached out when this ran mm -hmm. and wanted to have some ammunition and talk. And, and in fact, I volunteered to give him some more talking points if he really needed it. And they said, you know, called me back a week or so later and said, I think this is going to be fine. <laughs> okay. We've got a couple you know. of comments here. Yes. Um, Keith Fox says hello. I don't know if you know. Yes. It. Okay. And uh, Carrie Bowers is, mm -hmm. is online. All right. Rachel Ab Abernathy says fair tax will collect taxes from anyone participating as a consumer in the U.S., including tourists, those who have financial gains, and illegal sources. So, yeah. That it's very true. Sums it up. Yep. Very true. Yep. It will collect taxes that are not being collected now. And also it goes toward the biggest problem that I think the federal government has with the income payroll tax system. And quite honestly, many states that rely on the state income tax, which mm -hmm. is tied to the federal, is evasion. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you're going to evade the federal income tax you're also evading the Social Security tax. You're also evading the state income tax. So consequently, that $9 trillion that's being evaded on the federal level is going to translate to easily a trillion dollars on the state level. So you're going to have taxes being evaded. Oh, yeah. And you're going to have continued and growing evasion as more and more people, you know, they're like... Me, okay, I'm uh, 70 years old, but I'm still working. There's a lot of us who have decided we're going to continue working. A mm -hmm. lot of people who do the work do it on a contractual basis. A lot of people who do the work, maybe, you know, in, in my case, if, even if I wanted to, I wouldn't dare <laughs> not report every dime <laughs> and document every expense yes. because I get looked at all the time. Mm -hmm. But there are a number of people who I know for a fact just because they come to you and they say, well, I'm happy to do that work for you. And how much is it? Well, cash or check. 
<laughs> and I See, say, why are they asking? Yeah, and I say, oh, you don't, you don't want the bookkeeping associated with a check? And, and they <laughs> roll their eyes, right? And, and typically, it's a 20, 25% difference mm -hmm. in price. If you're going to pay me cash, I can get it done for this. If you're going to pay me a check, and it's not only you know, kind of incidental workers. It's the plumber that came to fix my wife's, or my disposal. I was ordered to get it fixed. <laughs> and, you know, and the, there. the quote was cash, credit card. Yeah. And, and there the, was a difference. The difference, like, you, well, you see that at the gas pumps, too. Yeah. Cash price, credit price, Yeah, all but this stuff. was not yeah, 3%. This, 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 this is this a was, little, this bigger was, <laughs> little bigger difference you're talking about like there. like 20%. Okay. And, and so I think you're, you're going to see that having to be faced by the federal government, having to be faced by the state governments, and you're seeing more and more states looking at the idea of collecting more from sales taxes because that's something that they can do. Absolutely. Before, We've got a before, question here from Mark R. Smith. Yes. He says, can you explain how the fair tax delineates between sales and use tax for businesses? Uh, how are the items uh, for resale taxed? Well, if they're for resale, they're not taxed. You basically, if you're in the business, all right, I'm an attorney. I am selling legal services. I can sell a legal service to Ron if I am going to do a will for it. That's a retail service. In other words, Ron is the consumer. When Ron pays me for doing it, I collect the fair tax. Right. Okay? Now, the implements that I needed to produce that will, if it was software, the computer, whatever, those are for the business production of retail products. Right. So they're not taxable. So I have a resale permit, which allows me to go to Best Buy and buy that computer with no federal sales tax, no fair tax charge. Now, if I'm working for a business, mm -hmm. which is creating cups, mm -hmm. okay, I am part of their cost of creating the cup. So they provide me a resale exemption, and I don't charge them sales tax. Okay? Now, one of the things that's misunderstood, I think, about the Wayfair decision by the court, which says that states can formulate ways of collecting their tax, their sales tax, or making vendors collect it for online sales is that in almost every state, you have two forms of tax, as Mark has pointed out. You have a sales tax. So if I go to Walmart, I pay a state sales tax. Mm -hmm. All right? If I go to XYZ online and order something in for my personal consumption, I am supposed to pay a use tax. Mm. All right? The use tax and the sales tax are the same rate. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how many people do you think buy these things online and forget to pay the use tax? <laughs> Probably don't, don't even most. Think about it. Most of them don't pay it because most of them aren't even aware of it. Unless right. the website automatically draws So that it. means that what happens is for certain sizes of vendors, mm -hmm. you're going to have a requirement that they start collecting the sales tax slash use tax, yeah. depending on how it's okay. and then remitting it. Good. Okay, before we get too off on another thing, let me remind everybody that the, uh, what happened here in Florida, the fair tax demagogue got beat really badly. So if you see any dishonest ads demagoguing the fair tax in any races in your area, let us know about it, either the fair tax guys at gmail.com, you can send us a link there, you can send it to our Facebook page, but we want to spotlight more than just this one ad that had a nice happy ending here in Florida. Right. And if I'm understanding the voice in my ear correctly, we have a phone call for you, sir. Yes, sir. Dale from Georgia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks, guys. Y'all are doing a great job, and I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Uh, I just completed an article I was reading about how California was introducing a law that would allow them to deduct their taxes uh, from their federal tax. That way... Uh, they could uh, take away the federal tax that they pay to their advantage, but the Trump administration had blocked that uh, act. They uh, cut it back to only $10,000. Right. And this uh, yeah. cut uh, 
deduction would uh, really benefit the rich people, and uh, but they won't be able to do that now because the Trump administration has blocked California from doing that. And uh, I was just thinking about how the fair tax would just take all of that kind of garbage out of the whole tax system and how much simpler it would be with well, just the fair tax. Yeah, you hit Dale, the key you, word, simpler. Yeah, Dale, you're totally correct. How much do you think, Dale, about the Georgia sales tax? Uh, uh, I don't think about it uh, very often. It's just uh, <laughs> something that you get used to That's and right. you're, you're, you know it's there. <laughs> That's right. And, and the fair tax would become something that you would notice every day because Today we've got a large percentage of the population that really aren't involved in the tax game. They don't really pay income tax, or many of them don't even file anymore, or they, or, you know, kids and all they don't. But you look at this and you say, everybody in America is a consumer. Everybody in America is going to see the cost of the federal government on every retail purchase they make. Mm -hmm. And the only decision that they're going to have is because of the fair tax, instead of you, Dale, looking and, well, is this deductible or is this, you know, whatever, you're going to say, well, if I go buy a car and I buy a used car, I'm not going to pay the fair tax. So maybe I'm going to go buy a used car and not pay the fair tax. And then your wife says, Dale, if she's like mine, you aren't going to buy the car you want. You're going to buy the car we want, which means she wants. And right. so, so I'm, I'm not the only one that happens to. I've been there and done that. So you, we are going to buy a new car. All right, then we're going to pay the fair tax. But that's the decision you make with the fair tax. I mean, that's the extent. It's not all this other thousands of pages of things and everything, you know, is... You know, am I going to put money away for retirement? What's going to happen if it goes to my kids? Are they going to pay tax? At what rate? All that's gone. It's all yeah. gone. Well, well, what I like is the fact that you make decisions on the merit of the decision and not on the tax results that yes. you're going to have to be dealing with the rest of your life. Yeah, Absolutely. That, that, that's how the fair tax was born. Yes. <laughs> yes. The idea, I mean, it's, it's a very basic idea, and I think it's really important to understand that when the framers of the Constitution were considering how to fund the government, one of the things that was discussed was France had an income tax, England had an income tax, and they saw it, and they saw this as an incredible problem for freedom, for government control, mm -hmm. and they said, we want to stay as far away from this as we can, and in the Constitution, they allowed for excise taxes. The fair tax, any sales tax, really an excise tax. It's put on at the point of purchase. It's mm -hmm. another form of consumption tax. It's, yeah. yeah, any any tax right. on me is a consumption tax because ultimately I am making money to consume it. So if I pay an income tax, I'm paying before I get the money. Mm -hmm. If I'm paying a sales tax, I'm paying at the time of consumption. So the timing of the effect on my consumption, but as Dale pointed out, I am getting to determine when and how much tax I pay by when and how much I spent. Mm -hmm. With the income tax, I don't have any choice. I mean, yeah. no, they take that from you before you yeah, even get your no hands control. on it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Bob, Bob decides he wants to buy a used car today, and Ron <laughs> wants to buy a new car. They're going to be taxed the same way. They're both going to have to earn a dollar and a quarter, a dollar thirty, dollar forty to net the dollar to buy the car. Yeah, and so there is no real choice that they have. It's taken out before. So right. fair tax equal choice, fair tax equal freedom. Yeah. All right, good Well, topic. I've heard uh, uh, many people uh, post a statement that all taxation is theft. <laughs> uh, I really don't understand what they're talking about, and I really don't know how you expect to uh, manage and run the government. Yeah, that, that's a rather extreme form position. Of taxation. 
Yes. Yeah, that, that's a rather extreme well, position, but uh, well, you know, everybody wants the services. We've right. got to figure out the best way to, to, to pay for that's, them. And that's exactly right. I mean, one of the first, back in the early 1990s, when we started promoting replacing the income tax with a sales tax, when I'd go on the radio, usually before I'd go on, I'd get this sort of nervous question from the DJ or from the host. From the host, yeah. Have they attacked you yet? Meaning the IRS. Have they hit you yet? <laughs> and I, my answer was always the same. I hope they do. Because think of how much fun we would have by exposing it and how, mu how your ratings would zoom because we would disclose who it was and if to the best of our ability we'd find out how to reach them so you could have all your listeners send them a letter asking them why they're harassing me. Turn a negative into a positive. Oh, and, yeah. We, and, we've been doing that a good bit yeah. here on this we show. We got a comment from uh, a lady by the name of Pandora. Get a woman on the panel. They like the fair tax, too. Pandora, you have to go back a couple of episodes for when fair tax Elaine was sitting right over there. Right. Okay. Hmm. So it, it does happen. Well, another thing I, I wanted to say was that uh, one of my favorite statements is, uh, that taxation should be for generation of revenue and not for controlling yeah. behavior yeah. or Bingo. promoting a political agenda. Bingo! Right. You yeah. hit that one on the head. Yeah. Thank you, Dale. And Thanks. another one of my favorite statements is, understand it and you will demand it. Wonder, Absolutely. What, I love that. Wonder where he heard that. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. We need to use right, that, Bob. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, God. Appreciate you, what thanks, you're doing. Thanks very much, Dale. Thank you, Dale. They, they were going to borrow that. Thanks for the call. Again, uh, <laughs> our 888-787-8023. Ron, you're, oh, there we got about, I'll say your timer was covered up there. I couldn't yeah. see how much time we, we got We got about left. three minutes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, time, we can go over. Time okay, flies this, when you're having fun. Oh. You know, Bob, Bob has trouble with going over this 30-minute <laughs> limit, but there are no time police here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm going to have to well, bring my whistle and my cap. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. From an economic point of view, if you talk to an economist, and I've talked to a whole bunch of them, none of them have ever actually been able to support the idea. In fact, they don't even bring it up anymore that you would not have much more growth with the fair tax than under the current system. The reason they believe that the current system, to the extent that they do, is because all oh, we believe in this redistribution, we believe in more fairness and that. And I say to them, look, if you want to get more money to lower income people, collect the tax the easiest way you can, and then pass a bill to distribute it, take responsibility for it, and don't hide it in the income tax. Mm -hmm. Don't hide it with all this complicated credits and all that, but pass a direct funding bill and say everybody that's making under 50 grand with three kids gets 100,000. I don't care, but be man up and go in front of Congress and the people and pass it. Don't hide it. And of course, that's not very well received. By <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're going to have to run this episode of Fair Tax Power Radio down again. Again, let me remind everybody, if you see a dishonest ad demagoguing the fair tax, let us know about it. Thefairtaxguys at gmail.com is our email address. We have our Fair Tax Guys Facebook page. We want to shine the light of truth on as many of these dishonest ads as we can find and help them out. And as we say, we got a nice, uh, happy ending here in Florida, and hopefully that will be the case elsewhere as well. Yep. Yes. Kerry Bowers he said, point out that Congress owns the uh, Congress's own tax reform plan uh, blueprint noted from experts the absolute value of consumption taxes. Yeah, it was in their write-up. Right. Yep. Yeah. The, the Better Way by Paul Ryan. We, we'll uh, dig into this a good bit more in our next episode of Fair Tax Power Radio. We're yep. going to have to pre-record one that will play next week. We're going to keep Steve around for that as well. Yep. So, yep. Uh, again, thank you for coming today. We will be Bob, talking to you next you. week as well. <laughs> and let's see, what did I got to say? The, this is Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. Reminding you again that the fair tax is America's big solution. And how's this go? Once you understand it, you'll demand it. Got it. <laughs> oh, these income tax forms are way too complicated. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> Who are you? We're the fair tax guys. We've got a big solution for you. What's that? It's the fair tax completely eliminates the federal income tax system as we know it. No more withholding, no more payroll taxes, no more tax returns ever, 
no more IRS, all gone. And I guarantee you, once you understand it, you'll demand it. Yeah.